Hello, I am Dr. Jung Young On for Case Discussion. This is the first recording in 2021. Happy New Year, viewers. Already 15 days has passed this year. Are you keeping up with your New Year resolutions? We share the clinical difficulties and find the best solution is the new motto of this year. Keeping this in mind, let's tackle the difficulties of this year. So it's always glad to see these two doctors, Dr. Yang Seung-min and Dr. Son Young-hui. And we have a new master, Dr. Kim ki -sung. Nice to see you. So this is your first time to this case discussion. And what is your impression, Dr. Kim? This is not totally new to me. I worked at a conference with Dr. Chung, and I also worked with these two doctors at courses, and I wonder how I can contribute to this discussion, but uh, I will do my best. This is the first case discussion. Let's have a look at the first case, 30-year-old female patient, no specific systemic disease. At number 17, the patient wants implant placement and prosthesis. Can I place an implant here? On the panorama, the second molar in the upper right is missing as there is no trace of extraction socket, so it seems it was extracted long ago. In the sinus, pneumatization is severe. The residual bone looks one or two millimeters, and I see septum in the sinus, so sinus lift would be difficult. There is no CT images, which is regrettable. Based on this image, what do you think? First, maxillary number seven, the difficulties with the implant in that place, it is a very challenging place, just like the maxillary anterior. In this patient, the sign is pr problem and the vertical bone is deficient. That's secondary. In the single missing like upper number seven, we need to determine whether we will restore the tooth or not. That should be decided first. Thank you. I agree. As Dr. Son said, in this case, I think she, the patient received ortho treatment looking at the retainer. As you said, the space has remained as edentulous for a long time. If it is in the occlusion, I would not do that. If it is not in the occlusion, then I can consider it. For a long time, the patient has been adapted to missing tooth, so even though a single implant with a prosthesis is delivered, how much function can be recovered and nuisance can be created. So if the patient is used to that, I don't recommend the placement of an implant. From prosthodontics perspective, I would not do that. This is a challenging case. It will be hard to get the initial stability. From the prosthodontist perspective, we need to consider whether upper seven touches lower six, the concern of extrusion. The interdental space, even though the sinus lift can be done and initial stability is good. If the space is small, crown size would be small, so it would be very challenging and I wouldn't challenge the case. Listening to the doctors, it looks simple, but there are many things to consider. So using a similar case, you're going to explain how to deal with it, right? Dr. Sun, would you go first? So I have prepared the two cases, upper seven, placing an implant there throughout my career of a dentist. 
I haven't experienced a very happy result uh, because uh, I get complaints, food infection, and others. Sometimes I had to refabricate the prosthesis and I had to remove the implant and uh, place it again. So let's have a look at cases when we don't have such complications less and in what cases we have more complications. So let's look at the first case. Number 17 and 47 are missing. So the patient came to me to get implants there. The bone level of distal of 6 is noticeable. If the ridge is not horizontal and if it is slanted, placing an implant there means the implant goes deeper at the mesial side. So that is the first problem. Therefore, when the ridge is slanted, I try not to place an implant in maxilla, but in this patient, it's the opposite. I'm not the only one who has a private practice here. So uh, if a if patient wants an implant, I deliver. So I use the standard placement approach. So number 17 and 47 were placed in a one stage approach. Uh, this was an prosthesis is delivered. This is an old case and uh, bone level is okay um, during the follow-up. This is not common. The residual bone is abundant and no problem in placing the implant. So if the case is not like this, we have to think a lot of things. And uh, in the posterior of Maxilla, the visibility is poor. That's another problem. Accurate the vertical and the horizontal positions and angle of implants should be considered. And there are many techniques that we can use. The second case, 17 is missing, but the patient doesn't want the extraction of number 18, but wants an implant. So this is the slanted, sloped bridge. So this is problematic. What I used approach is, as you know, the one guide. This is the best solution, I believe, especially if the vertical opening is restricted. Opening a hole in the guide can be the solution. Using the one guide, implant is placed. It went in pretty well, and prosthesis is mounted. So, if you are not skilled or confident in placing implant positions accurately, try to use this guided system for accurate positioning of an implant to prevent the complications down the road. That's why I have introduced two single cases. Thank you. I have prepared the most posterior tooth. I talked about whether the tooth is in occlusion, and then we don't need to do the restoration. If not, we need to restore the tooth. The conditions for restoration is that if the need for the restoration is recognized by the patient and the doctor early, it would be easier. Still, it's your slice. It's the follow-up CT. I thought I deleted the slide, but it's still there. Sorry. Let me see the slide. Oh, you did a very good job. The implant is very well placed, as I said earlier, to restore or not the most posterior tooth. Uh, the criteria is occlusion. Like this, 
on the right, number 47 is missing, then the 17, the opposing tooth cannot be occluded. So for a long time, it has developed like this. On the right, you can look at the left and uh, infer. There's endo treated and there's an implant on the mandible. It may not be the case. Conversely, maybe the opposing tooth was endo treated to place an implant. That's something we can think about. And the patient came back. He knows uh, the situation. Time passed because he didn't have any discomfort, but he came back after 10 years in 2016 and he wants an implant. I don't know why suddenly he wants an implant. And I told him the opposite tooth needs to be endotreated or uh, the tooth should be intruded. Otherwise, there is no space to place an implant. So this is the beginning. The opposite implant is okay. And at 47, the antagonist is coming down almost in touch with gingiva and i told him at the beginning do you really have to do it the patient didn't feel comfortable because the both sides are different so i explained that the opposite side should be endo treated which was declined by the patient and the second option is to intrude and um, that was accepted and it was intruded little by little and it was finished. As you can see, compared to the opposite side, the crown height looked very short clinically, so it is recovered to a certain degree. But as Dr. Son said, there is an inevitable problem in the most posterior tooth. So there is a gap between the implant and the natural tooth. So it happened right after the treatment and uh, on the opposite side, the crown was changed several times and the patient recognizes the problem, but uh, whenever he comes, he complains the food impaction. So considering this, do we need to really treat that way? So. If occlusion is a problem, we need to do the treatment, but it should be explained to the patient fully. But if we recognize the problem earlier, then we could have saved some efforts here. So the gap is widening. How long did it take to do the intrusion? the ortho treatment about a year the intrusion does intrusion work it works but not as good as we expected did it reach the sinus no not really from certain point the intrusion didn't really work i'm not an ortho dentist so next time the patient comes i'll take the panorama x-ray and uh, so uh, the prosthodontist did a little bit of enameplasty you can see the cusp shortened but it was sufficiently intruded it was not a bad case i missed one thing on the right number seven is missing on the left, it's only missing in the maxilla. Would I recommend placing an implant here? No. If occlusion is no problem. In 2015, the patient comes to me. It was delayed and came back in 2020. He wants an implant. Number 25 is a hopeless tooth and uh, he didn't mention anything about number six and seven. He wants an implant there. So if the patient is accustomed to the situation, do we really need to do the implants there? Prosthodontically, it's a different matter, but if we do something here, if there's no problem, 
then some problem can occur for both the patient and to us later. How old was he? At the initial visit, he was 65 and uh, 70 in 2020. He came to have an implant after the implant treatment became covered by the national health insurance. It has to do with the age group, right? Yes. Dr. Kim ki -sung, please go ahead with your case. So the case under discussion is very hard, so I want to be safe and don't want to suffer from complications, so I wouldn't do it. But in this case, the patient really wanted it, therefore I challenged it. Number 27 was extracted. The problem is number 28 is buried and the bone quality is poor. So I asked the patient to use as it is as the patient is in the 60s and the patient insisted on implant. He didn't like the asymmetry of the face. I told him I would review. After taking a CT, I used one guide system, so I prepared a guided surgery and I could find the space. So I avoided number six and eight and thick implant needs to be placed. I could find the path so uh, one guy surgery can ensure certain precision implant was placed the bone quality is poor so i was worried about the initial stability bone volume is okay so considering those i made the plan and the guided surgery is used to place an implant so there's uh, enough opening and therefore i didn't use the open hole in the guide. If you have an open hole in the guide, drilling can slip. Therefore, I try not to have a hole in the guide. As Dr. Son said, upper number seven, the flap was raised. I usually try to avoid it. Upper number seven, the gingiva is thick. So after placing an implant, the suture is difficult. So. I go for flapless, so a punch hole is used to place an implant on the day of implant placement. Gaining initial stability is very important, so I under drilled and uh, pushed down the implant. So here, this is under drilled. The final implant placed is 4.5 by 11.5. I usually don't like long implants, but for fear of initial stability, I used a long implant. Initial drill and 3.5 drill is used. 4.0 and 4.5 were skipped. If I don't use a guided surgery, I do under drilling and place an implant, but depending on the bone quality, sometimes it's hard to get the initial stability. But if you use a guide, it's very stable, 3.5 under drilling, and implant can be placed quite smoothly, and the initial stability can be obtained. So in this case, the stability, initial stability uh, was pretty good. Upper number 7 has poor visibility. It's a place where Initial stability is hard to gain, but here it was successful. Could successfully avoid the impacted number eight. You can see a long implant place uh, reaching the sinus wall. Abutment was delivered about three months later. I like a cat came abutment like this. Ceramic prosthesis is what the patient wanted. Zirconia is the gold standard, but uh, I don't have the milling machine for that. So I used Emax Press, which is widely used, and it is transparent. So it looks grayish here, but it is not an aesthetic zone. But the outcome was pretty good. This is completed. This is panorama x-ray. After two years, the bone quality surrounding the area is getting better. So in a case like this, number seven a treatment can be done. 
In December last year, I did the single implant placement. The surgery is done, but uh, the process is yet to be delivered. I said uh, the previous case was hard, but if the bone quality and bone volume is proper, uh, more frequently we have to raise sinus to place an implant and there is advantage of using one guided system and when there is a need to raise sinus one cast can be used with under drilling initial stability can be obtained so at number seven maxilla or mandible can be challenged this is a maxillary number seven case as i have a private practice i need to do whatever that I can. In the past, in the book of Karmish, it says 13 reasons not to place a single implant in the second molar area. And I believe Karmish failed a lot in that area, but the time has changed. Because implanted surfaces have been advanced, PA soy surfaces from ostem increases PIC and there are short implants and guided surgery technique is available one cast to access a sinus and in Korea uh, the university hospital is different but uh, implant treatment is very cheap uh, among the private practices so I try to cover as many areas as possible However, if you go beyond your capability, you will be under too much pressure, so I try to avoid that. What's the prognosis of single implant placement in the second uh, molar area? To answer that, I collect data, like writing a daily journal, so I have the data. The number of single implants placed on upper number 7 since 2001, when I began to place implants, is 102. And two of them failed. Karmish in the past said that the failure rate is very high, but it's case by case and it has to do with the implant surfaces. You can challenge there, but not recklessly. Then what is the criteria? Bone quality or bone height? If there is enough bone volume, I'm confident I can get the initial stability. 5 millimeters of vertical space at the second molar area by cortical fixation is not necessarily good by elevating the sinus without bone grafting you can get the stability from the cortical thank you implanted technology has been developed over time in line with that various options can be considered in treating the patient would you give us the final comments, please? Would you do first? I challenge as a private practitioner when it is too close to the nerve, even though there is a distance to the nerve, if the space to the antagonist is too short, implant can be placed, but the prosthesis would be difficult, so we need to avoid unnecessary risk. We need to consider bone and space for prosthesis, and we also can challenge if we use short implant, and if there is space, we can challenge, but we need to be careful about the nerve. We have a new guide kit called 1485 kit, which can be used near the nerve. They can help broaden our scope of work. I have a private practice too, but um, I don't do upper number 7 unless the patient asks for it. Mandible number 7 may elongate, therefore I strongly recommend the patient to do it. If it is upper number 7, unless the patient begs for it, I don't do it. Place of the residual bone, right. Because it is beyond the scope of my capability and that they can lead to the compliance of the patients, I'm not saying you need to follow me. 
if you can, you can challenge within your capability. You can do it. But this requires a lot of thinking and uh, a lot of considerations compared to other single implant cases. I place implants wherever I can, but I'm with the university hospital, so I work with the prosthodontal department closely. And prosthodontal doctors gave us several suggestions, and we look at each of them, whether we can do it or not. A prosthodontal lists ideas come first, and they have different ideas amongst their, themselves. Some do number seven, and some don't. Whatever they wish, we accommodate them. But as you said before, as was in the pictures, the gap appears in almost all cases. How to resolve the issue prosthodontally is something we need to work on. Personally, unless it's absolutely necessary, we need to try to avoid that. But isn't that the responsibility of prosthodontics? Yes, but uh, they come to me and they say the gums are not very good. Yes, the prosthodontists are always concerned about that. And my wish is we try to avoid it, but if they want, I accommodate. So in this case discussion, we talked about implant placement at number 17. This has been the first case discussion in 2021. I hope this has been helpful to the dentists who sent us the cases and the viewers. And we will try to improve upon ourselves continuously. So this concludes the case discussion of today. Thank you very much for joining us. Goodbye. I'm Dr. Jung Young Eun, and I'll see you next time.